Hey there, so literally seconds ago, I was on Twitter and I was on Instagram and I was basically tweeting and Instagramming that this video was going to happen right now. I did promise this video last night. However, today was Father's Day and yesterday we decided to have a date night. We haven't had one in a while. She's been working a lot. I've been going around doing other things, uh, getting ready for school, uh, getting everything situated. So last night we went out to the drive-in. We went out and saw... Uh, Men in Black International, which I do recommend. It actually is a really fun movie. Um, and I really like the little guy. There's Pawnee. You'll know if you need to see it, Pawnee. Uh, and I also went and saw John Wick 3 because drive-ins are always double features, triple features on, uh, sun I think, on Sunday nights. And when it's a uh, holiday, they do an all-night extravaganza show, which is really cool. And every once in a while, they do a retro thing, like a Friday 13th, not the 1980 edition or something like that. Um, and they'll put like a movie with that. Anyway, so here we are tonight. We're talking Arrow video. If you are familiar with Arrow, and you probably are, you can see them right in the back. So that shelf there with the, uh, with the buxom lady on it, uh, that is my Arrow video shelf. Now, everything is set from the indicators, indicators right on the top are Arrow video releases. I've been collecting Arrow for quite a while, and it was thanks to Horror Hound magazine that I actually got into Arrow in the first place. I remember like buying a Horror Hound magazine at one point, and they had an article on Arrow Video. Hey, Mug, how's it going? Are you ready for the sale? So my better half did say that I could have a little a little bit of money for the sale. So I'm just going to, we got 100 put aside, just so not much. But considering I had zero before, that's that's not too bad. Hey, PMAC, how's it going, man? Love my videos, by the way. So... The 10th anniversary, this is the 10th year Arrow's been around. Uh, they've come a long way in 10 years. Uh, Arrow and Vinegar Syndrome, for me, are the, are the top of the, uh, of the echelon when it comes to movie collecting. They're, you know, Criterion's number three. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you there. Hey, Corey. But Arrow and uh, Vinegar Syndrome, I think they get a best. They get a best for the, the stuff that they do. <laughs> I understand that. I really do. I actually had not intended it at all to do this, but uh, my better half said we were downstairs. I was playing uh, some Hydro Thunder on the Xbox uh, One, and uh, she's like, you know, I just picked up the you know the one dollar uh, Ultimate Game Pass. It starts tomorrow. Actually, it's going on for the next seven days, and it's the it's going to be for their. And apparently, from what I've been told, and what I've been able to find out, this isn't just any sale. This is going to be sale priced and it's going to be buy one, get one, much like they did in the HMVs and FOPs over in, in, uh, over there in London and, uh, well, over there in the UK. Uh, so we're looking at basically you, you can get a few arrow stuff to go in your, into your title. So I got 15 put over there that I'm going to, that I'm going to showcase and I've got a whole bunch back there, so if there are things you're looking at for Arrow, definitely tonight is going to be the time to ask me about the Arrow sale. Uh, I will do a video tomorrow once the sale goes live, and we'll talk about it then. But I figure, let's get let's get the primer out there. Let's get you get let's get everybody ready. Uh, let's see exactly what Arrow has to offer for people that know Arrow. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of fun. Uh, maybe they'll find something that they don't have for people that are new to Arrow. This is a this should hopefully be a great introduction because what I don't know, trust me, other members of the movie club right on here know. Sale price in BOGO, that's what that's what I've heard, PMAC. Now I'm not Arrow, so I can't I can't swear by that, but that's what I've heard. And if that's the case, I'm so dipping into it. And there are eight titles that were previously released that are coming back with uh, different artwork and like Sans the booklet, ones that were sold out. So the Ringu collection is coming back. Uh, we have uh, Phantasm actually being done on its own, and not as the box set, but actually the original Phantasm is coming out on its own. Some of these are having new remasters as well, by the way. Uh, the house collection that's sold out. There's going to be new artwork, and you know, just take the booklet out, and you're going to get you can get the four house movies at a discounted price as well. So there's going to be a few different things on the sale. I apologize if I'm a little slurpy. I'm just really thirsty. Uh, Hard to kill. Oh, yes. Nuka Masterakis. Cheers, Bears. I'm a huge Nuka Masterakis fan. Uh, you know, hard to kill. I remember when Scorpion put out a uh, blind date. I had to grab that right away. 
You don't have the Ringu set? That's coming back. I missed out on the Ringu set the first time around PMAC, and I missed out on the, on the house set as well. So, depending upon the pricing of it, I'm kind of inter interested in the house set. And if I can score myself like a house set and a Ringu set for free, that's, that's a possibility, man. That's the thought. Hey, Brian there. Um, we're talking the big 10th anniversary Arrow video sale tonight. I, I'm diving into your pocketbook again, Brian. I'm, I'm doing that because I'm, 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 I'm that type of guy. Uh, see, one of these days, like Arrow or Vinegar Syndrome or something like that, are going to look at one of these videos and, and hopefully send me a t-shirt. I'm asking for a t-shirt. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> so let's... You guys can tell me your favorite Arrow titles that you picked up over time. I got 15 titles here. I tried to pick different things from different genres just to give you a kind of like a, a bit of a scope. And I tried to... Every, when I could, I tried to pick something that may not be something that would normally be... Exactly. At least a t-shirt, Corey. That, that would not be on everybody's list. Uh, or maybe they, they'd seen it and just really hadn't thought of it. So let's start that. Uh, Barnes & Noble's having their 50% off. Ah, so see, this, this could be the last one. You never know. But if you want some Criterion level stuff, sometimes when Criterion were actually beaten, Brian, Arrow Academy did that a couple times. Oh, pieces. I still have the DVD of pieces. Uh, 4K, because I got the uh, I got the Blu-ray when Grindus put out. Uh, <laughs> I wish, Corey. Uh, that's it. I'm going to Morocco start my own label up. That's what I'll do. Uh, <laughs> my own exploitation label, which I will have to do like outside of Morocco because censorship and stuff like that. You know. Uh, <laughs> first up, uh, by Ricardo Fridi and Mario Bava. I used to have a uh, Barnes & Noble membership, but I, I kind of let it lapse in, in the, uh, or more recently. I think the last time it was because they wouldn't let me take the 10%, actually. I had to come into store to do it. And obviously, not able to. The American Horror Project Volume 2 was showing a sought out 4K. <coughs> oh, bless me. Sorry. Whoa. Big sneeze. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, Oh, please don't let me be getting sick. This is Kaltiki the Immortal Monster. Thank you. And this one is a lot of fun. Think of this as kind of an Italian version of the blob, but also like... I am going to sneeze again. Hold on. I'll be right back. We're going to talk Kaltiki. Start talking about stuff before I get, before I get back, because I have to go and grab something, or I'm gonna be all nose dripping and stuff like that. I shall return, give me like a minute. Keep talking. Alrighty. Oh, that would look sound awkward. My better half asked if I was okay because I was on the, uh, I was sneezing and I was typing there. Uh, <laughs> it's from my gymnastic days, woof. <laughs>
Oh, welcome, Jimbo. Welcome, everybody that came in while I was gone. Keltiki. Does everybody have this one? This one is really fun. If you like monster movies, if you like kind of the fun stuff, I think 4K, you probably got this. If you don't have this, you should have it, like, in, in all seriousness. This is a really good, like, monster film. Uh, it's really well done. Hey, Isaac. You don't have this one, Barris? Uh, so basically, you got Ricardo Fridi, who was kind of like the first, kind of the grandfather of, like, uh, of horror for Italian horror. He's the guy that kind of started the thing. Now, the thing is that the second unit director, the director that was doing this, uh, that was doing all of the... Uh, the monster sequences in this film and the monster is actually pretty well done um it's you know it's pretty cheesy but it works really well and especially because it's in black and white um was mario baba hey jake welcome dude there's some really really great features on here as well uh it's a fantastic film it's uh, it runs at a pre pretty brisk pace too like at 76 minutes you, there's never time to get bored with this uh it's uh, it's pretty gory actually for its uh for its day as well. It doesn't, it, like you, most Italian films, even like in the early stuff, they didn't shy away from the gore as well, Corey. You, you might actually appreciate that about this film here. But the monster is pretty cool, well done. It's like, I almost wanna say it's like kind of like carpetish, but it's like, it's really, really intriguingly well done. If you've ever, if you're, hi, if you're from Britain and you've ever seen the Quatermass films, um, I think the first one, the Quatermass, might have been the first one. The Creeping Unknown. Remember that one? The one where the guy comes down and, and he slowly starts turning into a creature. So there's aspects of that within Keltiki. So this is not just a blob monster type thing. There's this evil uh, guy in here as well. It's really well done. Uh, I cannot, like, my better half wanted to get this one. She'd seen, like, some previews of it. Hey, Treat, how's it going, man? Um... My better half seen some previews of it, and I was like, yeah, okay, you know, I'll, I'll, we'll get it one of these days. She said, no, we got to get this for this sale. I, for, that was on the last sale. And I said, like, I want to I see this. So we put it on. Uh, I turned this on. I was, blew me away. Uh, great one. Great interview, of course, with Kim Newman, who is always fantastic uh, in this stuff here. Uh, there's a Ricardo Fridi uh, interview, like, talking about him, inter critic with Stefano Delia Casa. Uh, the Genesis of Keltiki with uh, Lugio Cozzi, who's always a great interview as well. There is an auto comment here with Tri Holworth on here as well. A uh, bunch of features on here, great stuff. And as always, they do have the alternate artwork. Though I'm not as a, a, a big fan of this alternate artwork right here. It like, it doesn't really showcase the monstrous part of that uh, film. Now, the second one is one that I think Kubrick Lover, if he doesn't have it, he's probably had it on his list at least once or twice. And that is Runaway Train. Holy crap, man, that's, that is pretty cool. So Runaway Train is a fantastic film. It is really one of the top echelon types of films. It had one thing going against it uh, when it came out. It was made by Canon. Uh, Canon films were not exactly known. It was exactly. It was written by Kurosawa. Uh, we're not known for the high quality films. They're known for more of their actioners and stuff like that. So because of that, unfortunately, Runaway Train kind of went under the radar. Uh, it is considered a, a fantastic film. And I'm pretty sure critically this was a hit as well. Uh, great cast. You know, again, like, like Brian just said there, a script by Akira Kurosawa. Uh, which is, you know, fantastically done. Stars, yeah, we got John Voight here. Uh, oh, God, there's so many people in this one. Eric Roberts. What's the girl's name again? Oh, yeah, right on the cover. Rebecca Mornier. There, I should have looked on the cover. This is, again, a two-disc set. It, I think it still has the booklet with it. And, uh, oh, there's always... I'm learning something new every time I come on here. Extremely suspenseful film, really well paced, really well done. It it kind of hey Juan, how's it going? I think was it Instagram or Twitter? I thought I was following you on Instagram or Twitter, and then I went and I and uh, I liked your stuff, but I hadn't hit the follow button, so I hit the follow button. I apologize for that, but uh, hey, day, how's it going? Hey, Dagtana, it's the big arrow sale coming up tomorrow morning. Or tonight, I, I don't know. Um, 
Oh, but anyway, there's a ton of features on here as well. Uh, Calm Before the Storm, Carl T. Hefner remembers Runway Train. From Thespian Fugitive, star John Voight shares his memories of his Academy Award nominated performance. So there you go. See, it did get an Academy Award nomination. Deserved an Academy win, but it got an Academy Award nomination. So we'll give it something for that. Uh, there's a ton of stuff on there with director Andre. I'm going to I'm gonna butcher this, just so you know. I'm going to say that ahead of time. You guys know me for butchering names, so that's okay. Uh, Andre Konchalovsky. Close enough? All right. Runaway Train. It is the Arrow Video 10th Anniversary Sale. Arrow has been around for 10 years. They're having kind of like, from what I hear, from what I've been told, it's been like, it's like sale prices with a buy one, get one type of thing going on. Not quite sure how that's going to work. I don't know a few years back they did like a, a kind of a four for 20 thing that was really good. People really loved it. Uh, they never followed that up again, unfortunately. But uh, we'll see how this one goes. Uh, buy one, get one. For me, that's going to tempt me to box the box set. Some box sets are included. That's, that's, there's the temptation right there. Now, the next one I'm going to show is more of a, is an indie film. It, I know it's not going to be for everyone. It's just a personal favorite of mine. Uh, it's a it's a it's a vampire film, and it is by Abel Ferrer. Um, Abel Ferrer, and uh, it's one that I just kind of I fell in love with when I saw it. Uh, it's you know black and white, kind of you know very low budget. I'm a huge fan of Lily Taylor, and uh, Christopher Walken has a small but really significant role in this film, and that is of course the addiction. Um, this was actually got for me for uh, for Christmas of uh, my of, for last Christmas. I, I didn't expect it. This was when basically my better half was out of town, and there was a Sunrise Records there, and they had the addiction there. Uh, she knew that I was a big fan of Lily Taylor, and she knew that I liked Arrow Video, so this kind of was a uh, a no brainer, and it was a vampire film as well. This is not your typical vampire film. This is neither. Oh, oh, she had Andy Warhol. That that's like one of her defining roles. I, I gotta say. It, it's it's definitely worth checking out. Now you have to understand, the it's going to be on the Arrow website itself, so you better find it on the Arrow website. So, I can't imagine being out just from the interviews here. But it's really well done. There's a great, great like long extended like, uh, like kind of making of interview with a few of the actors on here as well and and the director. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Love to meet the guy in person actually. Um, he's a strange character, but he's he's very like when you think of like an indie guy, some guy dedicated to the art. This you this is this is it. This is the guy. This is a different type of vampire film. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's not, you know, it's it's a modern vampire film. You're not, there's no sparkling vampires in this. Uh, it's not like overtly gothic. Uh, think of this more in the line of a, of a Martin-esque style film. If you remember George Romero's Martin, uh, then uh, this kind of has is more along that lines. There's more of a psychological aspect. There's no like hiding the fact that it it's a vampire film, but or or that the character is a vampire. But it, this basically deals with way in that. In vampirism as an addiction, like parallels with uh, you know with like heroin addiction stuff like that. It's it's just really really well done, um, and with with this director, and it, he's a big. So, without you even saying that, I can honestly say from watching his films, I can tell he is a uh, he's definitely <laughs> you're hundred percent right. I, I can tell him that he'd be a big Casavetes fan because. His movies are raw, like Cassavetes. Um, and Lily Taylor is definitely his Gina Rollins for this film right here. Uh, but again, I think it's a fantastic film. If you have not checked it out, definitely check it out. If not, especially if it's not at a good price during the sale. It's a really good one, and there are great special features. Like 4K just said right there, his interviews are always priceless. Next up, I decided to go for a classic Arrow Academy one. And uh, there's two of these that are right there. But this is my favorite edition. I have them both, but this is my favorite edition of this movie ever. Uh, and this is, well, there's more than two made, but there's two. The Killers with Burt Lancaster and Ava Gardner. I really, really love this film. This is, you know, kind of like a film noir. Uh, speaking of Cassavetti, <laughs> so now that, so there is a sequel. Well, not a sequel. This is a remake of this one done in the 60s with uh, Angie Dickinson. And I... 
John Cassavetes, I'm pretty sure, is in the uh, is in the remake of this one. Um, Omen under the inf definitely, definitely. Hey, Javid, check this one out. Uh, the Lee Marvin one is it's good. I just I have something for this film. I'm Ava Gardner's Gort. No, they're both Gort, but Ava Gardner and Burt Lang, There's just a chemistry uh, within this film. The the works personally better for me. But hey, if it's going to be Bogo. You might as well get the both of them and have them put, put them right next to each other in your movie shelf. But here you go, go the Killers, the original edition, right here. I don't think there's a lot I have to say about that one. That is fantastic. Yeah, that that's Ronald Reagan's last last bad guy role, right? One of his only bad guy roles, if I can remember correctly. But it definitely it's his last bad guy role. Here's one that I know some people don't like, but I'm particularly I'm a particular fan of, and I will tell you why right now. Be and you probably remember this one, it's because when I was acting, I used this movie and monologued from it on my audition tapes. So, what Ronald Reagan in the, in the Killers, in the, in the remake of The Killers with John Cassavetes and Lee Marvin, um, Ronald, Ronald Reagan's the bad guy. It wouldn't be the last time Ronald Reagan would be seen as a bad guy. <laughs> uh, but, you know. I'm still here, but I am a little sniffly. I'm back. Anyway, next up is Network, because, uh, you know, if you miss out on the sale, you're going to be mad as hell and you're not going to be able to take it anymore. Uh, again, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely a writer's and an actor's film. Uh, a hundred percent. It's Faye Dunaway, William Holden, Peter Finch, Robert Duvall. Maybe I am thinking of Killer's Kiss. I could be. <laughs> or the kill. Hmm. I'd have to go over and look, which I'm not going to do that right now. But you're probably. But you're right. I, I know you're right because I know I've got. I will get this wrong. Uh, right now, Network is. Fantastic! It is a wonderful film. Uh, I've always loved this film. It's got it's done by Sidney Lumet, and uh, it's written by Patty Chavsky. There we go. This is amazing. Like that's all really I got to say. And if you want to see a movie that's relevant right now, uh, this very moment, Network is relevant right now. Um, probably more so than it's ever been, but unfortunately, as a guy that that's, that studied journalism, that was the first thing that I went to uh, to, to university for. Uh, it's always been a bit that way. Uh, it's it just unfortunately has gotten worse. Uh, but luckily, we got some good ones around, so that's that's always good. Mad Prophet of the Airways. <laughs> Who is the Mad Prophet of the Airways now? Who's that crazy guy out that they talk about all the time? Oh, The Naked City is fantastic. Great cover, too, by the way. Love that film. There's a, what's, that, what's that? There's a million cities in the Naked City. This is one of them. Definitely check it out again. I think that's something I think that you would really like. Uh, yep. I'm sure. It, yeah, Peter Finch. You are correct. This one was put out, I'm pretty sure, by Scream Factory as well. But this, I just love this movie. Uh, <laughs> and that is the classic Brian De Palma obsession. And here is where I'm going to say something that some people, uh, this is what to call, remember the unpopular opinion thing? Like say in popular opinion, that type of thing. So obsession is my vertigo. So for me, vertigo, bit of a bummer. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Love Hitchcock. I got it over there. But I like Obsession better. I really do. Um, again, uh, 
the but the the ending it's the ending of vertigo <laughs> uh, i i just i love the way obsession ends uh i'm a schmaltzy type of guy sometimes and sometimes i know actually i know that it's different that's why i knew when, <laughs> when i said that you make a response vertigo is a fantastically wonderful well-crafted top of the line film um my favorite hitchcock is you guys know shadow of doubt uh, i'm just saying for the obsession style of film, I love this. I, I just love this and because I really got into Vertigo and Vertigo bummed me out in the end without giving it away. It's only been a few, what's it, 40 years, but still don't want to give away that ending. But uh, Obsession, I, I just really liked it. I wanted to get at least one black exploitation one in here that I think everybody should pick up. And this is probably one of the ones that I think unfortunately flies under the radar. It's extremely well acted, extremely well done. Uh, definitely one of the best black exploitation movies uh, in, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and I know someone on here recently said they were going to start collecting black exploitation, that they really hadn't do dove into it yet. I'm not sure if you're here tonight, but if you're seeing this later, uh, JD's Revenge is hands down one of the best, actually. Uh, it, it, it stars uh, Glenn Turman. Um, we've got, I think, Louis Gossett Jr. is in this one as well. I See, I knew you would like Ganja and Hess. I just kind of had that feeling. And it's such a... We talked about Ganja and Hess for like... A couple hours afterwards. Oh man, I th is this one? This one, unfortunately, is is region two. Uh, the well there will be like some region like some region free ones. Um, so, fingers crossed for a lot of those for you. Yeah, Louis Gossett Jr. We got in this one here. Uh, Glenn Turman, uh, Joanne Pringle, who's fantastic in this one here as well. If you have not seen JD's Revenge, this is actually a really, really well crafted, well done film. You've got this young guy that becomes possessed by the spirit of, uh, of JD Walker, and he's out for revenge. It, that's pretty simple right there. But the way that he portrays both characters, like this kind of this like nicer young guy and now he gets changed and and turns into this jd character it's just really well done it's really well crafted uh this is extremely well acted and uh i really enjoy this film i do put this in the tops of the uh, black exploitation genre this is not a shaft but it's you know it, it, again this is a really fun really excellent little film that i uh, definitely recommend for anybody that uh that wants to uh that wants to look into black exploitation or just look into some really well crafted films um as far as like as actors go i think glenn and i think it's Terman, Terman, truman uh, term i'm gonna go Terman. um is one of those actors that, that like some people like my age remember from a different world and uh and stuff like that but he was like a really good really quality uh character actor and uh i think he's been underrated over the years I would. I gotta get more stuff with uh, with him in him in it actually, because he just he always blows me away. Whenever, even if it's a little performance, I remember even being on Murder She Wrote, in uh, one of the early seasons, and uh, he just he's, he stands out. He's one of those character actors that really stands out. For all you guys waiting for horror, don't worry. There's more horror coming. JD's Revenge is kind of horror, so that's you. You got horror there. Hey, Vinny, welcome, dude. <laughs> that's okay. You're late, but you're here, and dude. Arrow sale. Late tonight or tomorrow, I don't know which, but it's starting. Buy one, get one. Sale prices. That's what I mean. I've heard. That's what's good. That's the rumor in the grapevine. You gonna be Ubering it again, Vinny? Are you gonna be Ubering it again? White of the eye. This is an incredibly fantastic film and i am going to tell you something i do not normally i'll check for you man unfortunately this one is uk uh, i'm going to tell you something i don't normally say okay pick this company over this company for a movie like except when it's apparent this movie was also put out uh, oh the sale the sale uh yeah it's gonna be on their uk website 
Uh, so you better go to the uh, to the website, the Arrow website, and, and go from there. But I'm sure there'll be like movies from uh, from both regions there. Just check to uh, to make sure. Uh, Scream Factory put this out, and they did a nice edition of it, and it's fantastic that they put it out. But if you have the ability to get this edition of White of the Eye, it is head and shoulders above what Scream Factory put out. Oh, the Sasha Gutry set. Oh, you just saw La Poison? We love that film. That's actually a favorite of ours. Uh, but better half introduced me to it. Because she loves that guy. That, the actor, you know, that plays the, uh, the, the husband. Uh, fantastic. And the sequence where he goes to talk to the lawyer and, and confesses about killing his wife, priceless. Track 29, I don't think I have, you know? And, but what makes this one way, way, like hands above better than the Scream Factor edition? I will tell you right now. There is a feature length documentary, a two hour length documentary on this one here. And it is called Donald Camel, The Ultimate Performance. If, even if you don't, you know, if you're not a huge fan of like a, a lot of Donald Camel's films, like performance and stuff like that, you know, with Mick Jagger, this is one of the most fascinating documentaries. Donald Kamel died at a very early age, and he's a fantastic. It was a fantastic director, and he led a very kind of dark, fascinating life. It is a documentary that you 110% have to see. It is not available on the Scream Factor edition. It is only right here on this Arrow Video edition, uh, and it is great. This is there is a ton of stuff. Would you get this full two-hour length documentary, a 1972 short called "The Argument," is on here as well. Into the White, an interview with the co-cinematographer and Steadicam wizard Larry McConkey. Uh, deleted scenes, flashbacks, flashback sequences that were cut out as originally shot. Uh, just some amazing, amazing stuff. If you do not have Wood of the Eye, this is one of these movies that that I'm going to tell you it belongs in everybody's collection. If you like horror, if you like uh, if you like just well acted, uh, well done films, White of the Eye, definitely one that you should have. Somebody mentioned Teresa Russell. <clears throat> Did she star in uh, in horror? Because I think that was her, right? That movie needs a good release. So I don't think that one has gotten a good release yet. I remember liking that movie. Uh, I like that one a lot back in the day. For people that don't know, it, this is actually, you know, this is not, this is actually a quality film. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, definitely worth checking out. Thank you, Wolf. Jalo. I want to go with something different. I, and I had to go with this one right here. <laughs> and that is a bloodstained butterfly. Uh, I love this film. <clears throat> love it more than I realized I was going to. It's got a cool twist. Yeah, I got the twist before, you know, before it was revealed, which I, uh, but uh, I still thought it was really neat the way that it was done. If you've never seen this movie, actually this one is, is kind of cool. So basically there's this guy and he's kind of a, a prominent like society member who is accused of a murder of this young girl uh, during this uh, during the storm, I think, during this thunderstorm. And it's kind of a did he or didn't he type uh, with kind of like some mysterious characters in the background, including a, uh, uh, the, a guy that was associated with the girl that may or may not have been, be, be the actual killer. And, and an inevitable like face-off between these two characters and then the... Uh, the stunning twist is revealed. It is a really, really good film. It is probably, I think this is one of the most beautiful covers that they've ever done. This this is fantastic. By the way, uh, I want you guys, after I finish these 15, think some stuff that you want to see because I've got a whole shelf full, like a whole case full of arrow, bookcase full of arrow over there. So if there's any that you want to look at, any that you want to talk about, I can grab them. It's not, a, it's, it will not be a big deal. 
But again, fantastic one. Uh, again, we got like a commentary with Alan Jones and Kim Newman, so you know that is going to be a great commentary. Uh, visual essay here. I love visual essays. This one's with Tri with Tri Holworth, Murder in a B flat minor. Make sure whenever you watch a visual essay, and make sure you do watch visual essays. Don't watch them until after you've seen the film because they're going to give away stuff to the film. And sometimes if they're talking about different Jallo films in general, they're going to give away the endings to a couple of Jallo films. So usually there's a disclaimer before the visual essays that'll tell you if before you watch this, make sure you watch this film or such and such film. I don't know. It is the Arrow 10th anniversary sale. But during the last couple of sales, they've put, they've put a couple of Shameless on there. Now, I, for me, myself, for what's out there for Shameless right now, I don't think there's anything that I really need at this particular time. I think I'm going to focus like just on the Arrow stuff. But if you don't have many Shameless, and uh, or if you're, there's certain ones that are, there's a Gallic Holes in your collection, definitely a time to check it out. Do you know what? I, maybe it's because, are you from uh, the UK, Ryan? Maybe it's because I'm, I'm Canadian or... I actually really dig these. I I kind of dig the. I know you guys like hate them, but I there's something about like okay, this is this is a UK release. It's just it's kind of cool, US. Okay, it's just maybe it's just me, and where I'm such a a huge like UK lover uh, uh, that this that these thing is like a source of pride. I guess when I first got my first like UK release, I saw that thing, and I'd seen it for so many years, right? on like on videos and like in in stores and like you know on in in like uh magazines and stuff um but uh now i'm it's just like i can watch uk movies there's a uk symbol that's my uk film <laughs> i'm uh, i'm weird that way <clears throat> Oh, the Fastbender one that they did. That, isn't that box that sold out, or is it? I know they did, like, they put out, like, a most of them, right? Like, singular afterwards? Because they did some Rainer, Warner, Rainer, some Fastbender. Scalpel. Yes. I, uh, highly, highly recommend Scalpel with Judith Chapman. And, uh, it, yeah, Robert Lansing. Forgot his name the first second. Again, I really, really love this one. What's in stock? Oh, the, the Fast Bender one? Excellent. This is a great release. Uh, if you've never seen Scalpel, definitely worth seeing. Uh, this is what you call a Southern Gothic. If you're familiar, if you're not familiar with Southern Gothic, basically that's there are these kind of like little kind of like thrillers. Uh, this one is one of the kind of the, the tropes that you uh, will see in a uh, in a lot of these type of films and uh, that is there will be someone that looks like somebody and they'll disappear there'll be an affair circumstance or something will happen and then on somebody else will come in that will take their place and this one here basically uh, Robert Lansing plays a uh, plays a plastic surgeon whose uh, whose daughter uh, disappears and he can only get to an inheritance if his daughter is there to uh, to pretty much to take it uh, so he he's going home and he comes upon this uh, this stripper who's just gotten beaten up uh, really badly her face is like beyond recognition you know you can't tell what her face is her face is beyond recognition basically and so he decides he's gonna take her in free of charge in his private clinic, and he's going to fix her face. And uh, you know whose face she's going to have, right? Gets a little twisted, gets a little perverse, and it has some really, really fantastic twists and some great acting by Judith Chapman in a dual role in this film. This is gr a great little Southern Gothic film. And if you like that style of film and you don't have it in your collection, this is the time. This is now. You can definitely get this one in your collection. And this one is region free, A, B, and C. So whether you live in the US, you live in Canada, you live in the UK, you live in Scotland, you can grab Scalpel. That one can be on your list. Hey, Ken, welcome, dude. Oh, that'd be interesting. I'd be interested in that. I'm guessing. 
I'm just gonna guess here. Soundtrack, right? Gonna be a soundtrack. Grand has releasing that been doing those killing with the soundtracks. Now this one here is another region A and B, region one and two release, and this is an early one. This is really cool. One that I definitely, definitely recommend. And that is Mark of the Devil. That's Herbert Lam right there. What's his name? Reggie Nalder, right? Uh, yeah, Reggie Nalder, Udo Kair. Uh, just an incredible cast. If you like the uh, kind of the Norman J. Warren, the uh, Peter, uh, oh my God, don't tell me. Pete Walker, <laughs> sorry about that, uh, type of films. Uh, this this is uh, directed by Michael Armstrong. <laughs> She's a witch, and uh, it's uh, it's it's getting over into that into that territory. What's really good about this is if, like, say, you recently you grab you're grabbing that indicator box set from uh, that's coming out from uh, from you know about Norman J. Warren, or maybe you grab some of those in some of those Norman J. Warren titles from. Uh, or some from uh, from the recent Vinegar Syndrome sale, or you weren't on the Kino Lorber Redemption sale, and you grabbed some of those uh, Pete Walker titles. There's actually a really good documentary on here, and uh, basically it uh, it talks about like the uh, the change in uh, British horrors, the new wave of British horror directors. Um, I should watch this actually really soon. Again, I, I like this one. Uh, and it talks about people like Norman J. Warren and Pete Walker and guys like that, and how they how like kind of Hammer and like uh, and Amicus like we're kind of doing this this kind of old school stuff, especially Hammer, and how they were kind of like pushing against it. I you know I'll be honest with you, Ken. Aside from seeing the initial announcement of the American Horror Project, uh, and knowing that I definitely want it, I really have not looked at any of the films to see what they are at this particular point. So I could not tell you. Uh, I know that Sight Unseen, I want. I know the American Horror Project Volume One when that when that originally was came out, and the witch that uh, you know the, the came in from the sea. I think that was called. They that was the one that kind of got me. But the the other films were fantastic as well. Mark the Devil, though, I do recommend this. If you're, oh yeah, anything indicator, man. If it's an indicator box set, I gotta pick it up. Uh, I've collected them as you look in the background. I've got all the indicator box sets to date, and I uh, I don't want to miss out now. So I got to keep going. Uh, once once you start, you know, like it's like those Lay's potato chips. Once you have one, you can't stop. Uh, and and it's, and it's Dietrich, uh, so you can't go wrong with that. And it's got Morocco in it. What's comical? Is, okay, is hey Murdersville, welcome, dude. That we went and saw two movies last night. We went and saw Men in Black International, and we went and saw John Wick Three. Uh, for those uninitiated that don't that don't know my channel, um, I got a house. Like, well, I got a house and a condo in Morocco. My better half is actually from Morocco. That's where she's originally from. Uh, both Men in Black and John Wick had large portions of those films filmed in Morocco. Uh, in, uh, in Men in Black, they filmed in Marrakesh, and uh, that's where my condo's at. And so, and so, like, I could recognize the streets in that as, as they were going through. And in John Wick, he says, you know, take me to Casablanca, and there's this huge, big sequence in John Wick 3. Uh, don't Ignore the haters, man. Woof. Check out Men of Black Air National. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Chris Hammer's really good. It's really fun. Uh, so is Tessa Thompson, actually. They play off each other really well. Uh, but uh, in Men of Black 3, he's like, take me to Casablanca. And they get there. And I'm like, you're in Morocco, but, sir, but you are not in Casablanca, dude. You're in Essaouira. I know. I spent a lot of time in Essaouira. I know where that's at. I actually know those streets. Great gelato there, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Mark of the Devil. Sorry, I got on a tangent there. Fantastic film. Make sure you check it out. If you're a fan of Norman J. Warren, if you're a fan of Pete Walker, if you're a fan of that style of films, uh, film, definitely check this out. A lot of people are like, you know, I, we can't see this because Will Smith is in it. What do you mean? Will, how can we watch a, a Men in Black movie without Will Smith? Well, it's a franchise. It doesn't have to be in everyone. And you were kind of complaining when he was a genie in Aladdin. 
Make up your mind, guys. Make up your mind. <laughs> Next up is a uh, is a Western film, and it's a really good Western one as well. It's a double feature, actually, and it is the Ringo double feature. A Pistol for Ringo, which is my favorite. A Re the Return of Ringo, which is Hin's favorite. That's her favorite one. Uh, we, we sat down, we watched these as a double feature one afternoon, had a blast. They're actually totally kind of different, uh, but, uh, you know, same cast uh, pretty much in, uh, in both of these films. I'm not sure if they were just shot back to back or they were shot like soon after one another, but uh, they do like utilize the same cast. And Ringo is played by the same person, but he's played differently and it's almost a different character in each of these films. Um, and I love this one. Ken's right. This is a fantastic one. If you have not seen A Pistol of Ringo, The Return of Ringo, and you like Westerns at all, or if you just like spaghetti Westerns, uh, or if you just like a real fun action, fun little films, Ringo fits that bill all across the board. You should have this one in your collection. Uh, this one here, this is a Region B one. I don't know if there is a Region Free one or not. If there's not, there really should be because Ringo should be getting love as much as possible. And uh, you won't always do it, but I'll show you the, uh, the cover. It's like cover on this one here. Theme song from Pistol, really? So Pistol's my favorite of the two. Uh, now, Return is the more serious one. Uh, and definitely is more of a revenge film. Return of Ringo could re legitimately be called Revenge of Ringo. Because, you know, because what happens on it. But uh, either way, fantastic films. You're good either way with either one of those films. Next up, classic horror, underrated from this director. And the guy had just made Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The pass Passenger. Probably. I'd have to see it. Like, uh, I don't know if I've seen Passenger or not. But uh, my better half likes to see movies that, are, that were shot in Morocco. A lot of films right now, for some reason. Uh, Morocco's become a really popular place to shoot, to shoot films. Uh, you're going to notice that. Um, basically... It's, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I think so, actually. Uh, I'd have to look back. Uh, usually when you see a film shot in Morocco, it's usually Marrakesh or Essaouira. A lot of stuff is shot in Essaouira, um, which is a, uh, a great place. If you ever go to Morocco, you, you, you got to go to Essaouira. I haven't. I don't think I have seen it. I'll be honest with you. There's a few few movies I haven't seen, especially more recent films, uh, or if it's like an older one that I can't remember. I think so. Yeah, Tunisia. But uh, definitely a lot. I got to go through. Like you could go through the list if you like Game of Thrones, for instance. So, you know, a bunch of that was shot on Rock as well. Again, in Essaouira. And here is Eaten Alive. Uh, Hope Hooper what I consider to be a, a highly underrated film. Um, but it was hard. I mean, he just come off of doing Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yep. Oh, thanks a lot, Murders. Well, so did we read that there, guys? Basically, a lot of the, li a lot of the limited editions, a lot of the, some of the editions there are going to have limited availability. So, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a race to get some of the stuff, so you're gonna to have to be ready. Have they put up a timer yet, Murdersville? I'd like to kind of let us know when the sale is starting, because that's one thing that I that I don't that I'm not unaware of at this point right now. One cut of the dead. Ooh, I don't have that. But eating alive, guys, check it out. It's got Robert England. It's got my favorite, one of my favorite actors, Neville Brand. You know, you guys know I'm a real big Neville Brand fan. Um, of course, it has uh, Marilyn Burns from the original uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, William Finley from Phantom of the Paradise, uh, rest in peace. And uh, well, for both, both of them, actually. Fun little film. Robert England pay, plays Buck, and he has a very, very interesting first line. You ordered the VSAs? Nice! The VSAs are fantastic. Uh, you, have, you have steered yourself in the right direction with the VSAs. 
No, Toe Pooper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Direct to this one. I got two more here that I'm going to show, but then we can talk about like in general. We can just go in general. And I got a lot more back there, like limited editions, box sets, stuff like that. I'm not quite sure. If anybody's looking at the website and they see something they're kind of curious about, if I got it, I can pull it out of my out of my uh, case there and show you guys. We can actually talk about it a bit. Uh, the guys on here they may, may have it as well. And they may have to give you, may steer you in the right direction with some things as well. Uh, they definitely the movie club have steered have have basically steered me in the right direction in a lot of cases and this is foxy brown yes i had to put one pam Grier one on here how can you not and how can you not put the pam Grier movie where in my not so humble opinion she looks at her absolute pinnacle this it's pam Grier at her best like acting wise one of her best revenge plots one of her sexiest ones mug you do need this one this is an amazing one uh Pam Greer is gorgeous. She is utterly gorgeous. And I don't think there's any time that she looks like Foxy is, fa is fantastic. But... <laughs> nice try. <laughs> no, it's actually more of a kind of a homage to it. Uh, the, uh, the Jackie Brown one that he did. Probably not, actually. Our man from Marrakesh. I got that one over there. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna guess it's probably not. A lot of those films, like uh, like the Road to Morocco with Bing Crosby and Bob Hope and stuff like that, and Man from Marrakesh, probably weren't filmed there. I'd have to check it out. Uh, but a lot of those were filmed on studio lots and sets. Whoa, almost fell. Foxy Brown. Coffee, yeah, actually. Do you know what? So do I. I picked the wrong film. <laughs> All right, I'm kind of tired. I love Foxy Brown, but as Ken said, and he's correct because I went to pick coffee and I picked Foxy Brown. So there we go. Sorry about that. Either way, you're good. You're good with either one of those films. Um, coffee is my favorite Pam Greer film. And it was right next to Foxy Brown. But either way, if you don't have Foxy Brown, pick it up. If you don't have coffee, pick it up. If it's if it's Bogo, pick them both up. <laughs> okay, so the girl who knew too much. This is early Mario Bava, long considered one of the first Jalo films, um, if if not the first. Uh, highly underrated, or like a good role for John Saxon would do a lot of these Italian films. Um, if you haven't seen this one, it's, uh, it's lighter, it's less sleazier and stuff than later Jallos. Jallos really broken up into two really distinct, uh, eras. Uh, and this is, you know, the start of it. There are some great stuff on here again, like there's not a commentary by Tim Lucas, as there always is on any Mary Bava things that come out. Uh, we also get an introduction here by Alan Jones. Uh, there's an interview with Lucio Cosi on here as well. Uh, some really fantastic stuff. If you have not seen The Girl Who Knew Too Much, also known, uh, you know, under its alternate, like, cut, Killer Eye, uh, which doesn't make a lot of sense under that cut, but, uh, under that name, Evil Eye, sorry. Evil Eye. Don't like that name. The Girl Who Knew Too Much. Much, much better name. That, I would like to see that, actually, because the Black Sabbath and, uh, and Black Sunday were two of the early ones. The noir film I showed. Let me just check here. I'm going to just put these up here so I can actually see them. That was one of the early ones. And I'm guessing you are talking about... The, are you talking about The Killers? With Burt Lancaster? Actually, this one here is Region B, unfortunately. Um, have you ever looked into Seeky, a Seeky player, or like online? There's some great places online to get like region free players. Uh, the guys here definitely know. Uh, some of the guys here actually really know some great places to get re get a, a decently priced, safe region free player. Uh, so if you can help, uh, one there, guys. Definitely try to help them out. But the this one is uh, this one is region B. 
But if anybody on here like knows a good, great site for region free players that aren't you know, that aren't too bad, you're not going to hit too bad with shipping stuff like that. That you've gone and checked out yourself. If you want to give Juan some help there, definitely do so because uh, I wish I could. I wish that I knew. Um, I just when they, when I found out when I every any time went to like a store like Canadian Tire or Walmart when they used to sell the Seeky stuff, I uh, I basically would grab it right away. I actually I had I had around three or four at one point. I actually ended up giving one to my uh, to my cousin um, when I got him this uh, Arrow video uh, for uh, for Christmas one year. So what I did was I gave him a couple of Arrow videos and I gave him that. 220 Electronics in the U.S. Best place to get all region players there. Uh, Juan so. Uh, and that's seconded by, so Ken and Vinny, you can pretty much uh, stand by. Uh, they know their stuff. So definitely check out 220 Electronics. That's the place that I would go to if, uh, if, if something happened to both my players, which hopefully doesn't happen anytime soon. Sorry, guys, I got to drink this before it's cold. And it is cold. Ice cold. That movie that is that is the Killers, uh, the original Killers with Burt Lancaster and Ava Gardner. Um, there is a remake of the Killers. Oh, Don't Look Now, with Donald Sutherland and uh, Don't Look Now is friggin' creepy. It's a fantastic film. Um, and as I've stated on here before. If you're, if you're going, if you're a film student or you're going to film school, uh, Don't Look Now is probably the the best one of the best films that you can watch to study for uh, for editing. If you ever wanted to like know editing, um, sex scene, <laughs> yeah, everybody remembers that. It made it pissed off Warren Beatty so much that he tried to get the movie canceled. Javid uh, tried to get it like not make sure that it never got released because you know that was his girlfriend at the time. Now, Don't Look Now was one of those where the ending did not come as a... Actually, I didn't until you guys said so. Uh, no, actually, I think I mentioned it was mentioned on here before. Like some, one, some, one of you guys told me. Not today, but, uh, but I think on a recent one. Because uh, we talked about the cover of, the, uh, of it. Like some people didn't like the cover of uh, Don't Look Now. I thought it looked really cool. And it looks like one of those big box things. Um, which is the UK, they get so much sexy stuff, so many sexy box sets. Uh, if you haven't seen, oh, make sure to, to check it out. It is a really, really good film, Don't Look Now. Uh, it's well done. I initially came about it, not through the film, but I was, my mom actually was in, a, uh, a book club when I was young. Uh, we, we were voracious readers. Uh, that was like really kind of something that was uh, encouraged in my, uh, in my household. And uh, so every month, mom would, when mom would get a book, uh, she would say, you know, she, as a treat, she'd say, you pick out a book and you get what you want. And I was young and she thought I would pick out stuff like, you know, kids books and stuff like that. And my, uh, my sister did. However, I picked out things like the works of Charles Dickens, the complete uh, Sherlock Holmes, and I picked out, oh, I'm going to talk to you later. Hopefully, we'll see you tomorrow because I'm going to do another video. We're going to be talking about the sale and uh, doing a lot of that stuff. Hey, B-Movie. Uh, and anyway, so da the Daphne du Maurier, like the complete works of Daphne du Maurier stories, that's one of the things that I picked out. And I remember reading Don't Look Now, <clears throat> and it kind of freaked me out. I gotta turn on my. Uh, I gotta turn this down and turn on my. Turn on this here because things. I gotta. I am super happy and super proud that you guys are chatting so much tonight. Um, that always. That's always a, a big bonus for me. Uh, but I got to keep up with you, so. Because I'm nosy. That's why. That's because I'm nosy. Oh, yeah. That was Julie Christian Shampoo. They were, I think they were dating at that time. I'm not sure how much more they dated after Don't Look Now, though. Uh, 
and ordinary people just hits me. It always has, actually. There's something about that film that that that, that gets me. My body, my bodyguard as as personal like meaning to me. Uh, my bodyguard was a movie by Chris with Chris Makepeace uh, and I think Adam Baldwin uh, that was filmed in Toronto, uh, and uh, I'm Canadian. <laughs> I was living in uh, Alberta at the time. I was living in um, not Cameron, well, Tasquin, in Tasquin, Alberta. Matt, I thought Matt Dillon was the bad guy, it's, but Adam Baldwin isn't isn't he like the the good guy? Because in my bodyguard, Chris Makepeace is like this kid, and he's getting picked on, and I think he's getting picked on by Matt Dillon, and Adam Baldwin is kind of this like big lumbering type of guy. Um, that's uh that's that's kind of quiet, the kind of guy you basically, you know, that nobody picks on. He's just he kind of he's he's, he's a loner. He's, he sticks to himself, and Chris Makepeace kind of hires him. To be his bodyguard, and they become friends. Uh, I don't think that's out on blue, actually, as far as I know. It is a fantastic little film. Um, I really like it. I just moved to Atasquin, and uh, there was this. There's this guy there, uh, and he was a really nice guy. And I guess he'd seen the movie uh, <laughs> because I was like, I was walking home from school one day, and he said, "Hey, if, if any if any kids pick on you, man, I will I will totally be your bodyguard." Uh, you know, I got your back. Uh, I thought that was so cool. He was such a sweet. He was a huge, like, big lug of a dude. Um, such a such a neat little thing. Like, and so movies can affect you in a positive way. See, there you go. Because <laughs> I was as as you can see. Well, can't tell as much from right now. But I will tell you one thing right now. When I was a kid, you know, if, if you don't think I'm very big now, I was like a scarecrow. You. Like, a strong wind could blow this guy over when I was a kid. I was not the uh, I was not the biggest of guys. I was no uh, I wasn't anybody's bodyguard. All right, so I'm going to grab a couple of the Arrow video box sets back there, so we can look at a couple of those, so you guys can see. If you're new and you haven't seen any of the Arrow video box sets, you they are kind of unique. They're they're different than what you'd see over here in North America and there a lot of them are extremely extremely well done um, to give you kind of a, an idea with that as well uh, we've just gone through 15 other regular releases um, is there anything get the Sartana set perfect good idea so yeah I'm gonna grab the Sartana set I'm gonna grab a couple sets I'm pretty sure the Sartana yeah Sartana's back there and I'll give you guys an idea a couple of sets maybe out of print, but there'll be ones that'll be like uh, kind of related to it. I have returned. So, as seen in front of TV, I'm taking my shoes off. Ooh, nice. I did not know that actually. So, the first one I guess will show up up here right now is the Sartana set. So, if you are a spaghetti western fan, of any ilk at all, you you do need to have this in your collection. This is this one is a stunner of a set, and it's really good. Um, as Ken just mentioned there, uh, hey Mark, welcome, dude. We are talking 
Arrow video sale. It is starting tomorrow, I think. And th this is the Sartana set, the complete Sartana. Uh, now, there are five, I think, right? Five films on here. And this is the complete Sartana. There are more Sartana films, but they're not legitimate Sartana films. They're Sartana kind of knockoffs. They're using the name Sartana. This is the, one of the first times that I saw them use slim cases, these, uh, these kind of slim cases. So uh, I'm actually going to take them out here so you guys can actually see them. The Criterion Channel, unfortunately, isn't streaming yet in the, uh, as far as I'm aware, in the UK. Uh, but it, it'll be uh, hopefully soon. That's one of the things that I think that they're working on. Though the Criterion, Criterion did have like a channel uh, sort of on like the, I think on Amazon, uh, that was kind of like a, almost like a beta tester for uh, what the Criterion channel became. Uh, but uh, we'll uh, hopefully we'll see, uh, we'll see that. So here we got, uh, if you meet Sartana, Sartana prepare for your death. And as you can see, like there is a bunch of special features on like all of these here releases. Uh, we got thing, anything, everything from like, like either commentaries on here, <clears throat> interviews with writer director, uh, video essays to the familiar, for many of the familiar faces in the different Sartana films. <clears throat> You'll eventually get the criterion of it starting. But again, Javid, you always got to remember, you guys got like BFI and Eureka and Arrow Academy. And for the longest time, we had Criterion. That was it. That was like the one. That was a go-to for these classic films. You had like three or four choices. Uh, and I know Criterion's got a big name. Um, but as somebody that, that's that been, and Second Sight too, uh, as, you know, as as collector from both of the companies, sometimes it's an it's the name. Sometimes it's the name. Criterion does put out some great stuff, but when Criterion originally put out the original release of Unibaba, uh, it didn't it was didn't even touch the release that was put out by uh, by Eureka, not even close. And I I gotta show these because I do love the covers on these here. I am Sartana, your angel of death. Don't you just love this cover? Isn't that awesome? This it's just I love the character of Sartana, by the way. Eureka is really good. And what's really cool about Eureka is is it like a rainbow of colors when you got them in your uh, in, in your case? Sartana's here, trade your pistol for a coffin. I don't know, actually. I I would say it's, if anything, well, if anything, right now, uh, they should be putting more work into the PS4 uh, and the PS upcoming PS5, because uh, I'll tell you one thing, uh, Batman. There's no uh, doubting that uh, not going to E3 hurt them. That was a big mistake. Have a good funeral, my friend. Sartana will pay. What's the price point on this set? I actually don't know. Does anybody know the price point on this set? Vinny, if you don't have this set, man, I'm serious. Uh, it is a really good set, and there are a ton of features. Uh, I was unaware. When I when I got this set, I figured, like, you know, with certain sets, you know, you get, like, a commentary, like, here or there. Um, it'll be, like, okay. But this is loaded. Uh, th this set is loaded with stuff. You know, like, yeah, like, commentaries with C. Courtney Joyner on here. Um interviews with uh, with different actors from the films like video essays um just some really great stuff brand new interview with like george hilton um light the fuse sartana is coming see i may not know the answer but there's always going to be some fantastic person on there that will know the answer thank you so much and of course, as always, there is the Arrow book. This is a complete, complete Sartana. Let's give you an idea. Ah, 
I guess that's when they were hoping they were going to be able to have the rights to Django, right? Before Blue Underground screwed them over. But this is a fantastic set if you're a fan at all of spaghetti westerns. If you're a fan of like just cool westerns or action films, this this is 100% a set worth getting. Uh, look at the limited edition contents on the back there. Uh, it's just incredible how it's done. I keep this on here. There may be a picture on the back, which I don't, I can't tell because I still got this on here. I should take this off and put it in here, but I will one of these days. So volume one came out. Uh, sold out now I think if not grab it because uh, volume 2 is coming out and that is American Horror Project this is volume 1 um, some great films The Witch Who Came From The Sea not at all The Witch Story hey Nicole and Kyle welcome uh, nice to see you guys back on here again alright guys tomorrow the Arrow sale their 10th anniversary sale buy one get one sale prices limited edition things some limited edition stuff coming back that's was out of print keep an eye on the arrow website tomorrow i got a feeling it's gonna be a bit hectic so this is the original arrow horror project images oh images oh it's that's one I still have to get. Pajama Girl. I don't have the Pajama Girl case either, actually. Thief. I've got Thief. I got the limited edition of Thief because because you got to have that. Thief was fantastic, and uh, it. There. There's another thing. Arrow Academy's version of Thief. Ten. I think it's Arrow Academy. Maybe an Arrow video. Anyway, ten times better than Criterion. So this is the first volume. It had Premonition. I love this cover. It uh, really doesn't have anything to do with the film, but here we go. The Witcher Came From The Sea. And of course, Amara Testa's Carnival of Blood. How many did you guys get for the sale? I, I grabbed, you know, I still got four to come, uh, thanks to, well, I got 25 that I grabbed initially from the sale. Uh, and uh, from the vinegar syndrome cell and I uh, got four four more coming oh, thanks to uh, thanks to Brian uh, so that's gonna be a that's a big plus there so I got to make room on my shelf so that's always a good thing you are yes Vinny Vinny's video of uh, Vinny's channel by the way guys if you're not subscribed I'm sure you guys are subscribed if you're not subscribed to Vinny's channel he does some really really awesome stuff uh, make sure you check him out. He's going to be, you guys know I'm a vinegar syndrome lover and he's going to be unboxing his vinegar syndrome stuff. Uh, so once he films that video, that should be up about tonight or tomorrow, make sure you check it out. When you check it out, hit that subscribe button and that notification button so you know when his videos are coming out. Uh, ten, uh, so what was your, do you have a favorite? The severance. Uh, some people, I, I think Vinny, has his seven stuff ship. I think Vinny had his seven stuff ship before his his uh, his vinegar syndrome stuff. Because uh, every time I was on on it's on uh, Twitter, uh, Vinny was was like my <laughs> my vinegar syndrome stuff. But didn't you get your vinegar syndrome stuff before your seven stuff? Even though seven ship first, because you got your vinegar syndrome stuff. And, well, obviously you're going to be unboxing it, but. Uh, I'm pretty sure you said that the seven stuff, like you got an like a shipping announcement first. Seven can be a little. Uh, sometimes I'm not sure. Was Vi a pre-order, or was it a uh, you know it, it was it was done and coming out, because. Ghostbusters or Batman, but <laughs> because with Severn stuff, there's always certain things. Like I had to wait like a couple months for my Jallo, three months actually for my Jallo set, because of that actually. 
Oh. Night Beast, Don Dollar, right? Don Dollar's fantastic. Uh, we love, we got you. I'm, I'm sure you got Fiend, right? Uh, if you don't get, have Fiend, get Fiend. It's from Masquerader. It's really, really good. Um, June. Okay, so that's that one's going to take a bit. So, uh, so yeah, a couple weeks from now. By the way, say happy birthday to my youngest, who turned 19 tonight, and he is out having his first legal drink uh and i can even tell you what it is oh you gotta get fiend it's got a secret film on it it's got an extra don dollar film on it too as a uh, bonus feature um but uh it he had a blue lagoon which is uh vodka based so i just told him not to uh not to mix his drinks If you think that acting in Night Thanks, if you think that the acting in Night Beast is bad, wait till you get to Fiend. It takes it to a Shakespearean level of bad acting. I will make sure that he watches this part of the video afterwards. And thank you so much, by the way, guys. <laughs> First legal drink. I'm sure he's a teenager and he's had a couple of drinks. He's not much of a drinker, but I'm sure he's had some drinks with his friends before that that dad may not have known about. But <laughs> his first legal drink anyway. Yeah. All right. I think this one's still around. I though this one usually you can. I don't know if about like in the United States, but in Amazon CA. Every once in a while, this one comes on like for super cheap. Um, now that is Last House on the Left. Really great edition of this film. <laughs> the 119 special. Oh man. We used to do that podcast. I used to love that. Uh, me and my kids used to do a podcast together called the Dollar, I think the Dollar 19, Dollar 19, something special, something like that. And we uh, we used to enjoy that. It was based on on uh, actually the movie uh, Nail Gun Massacre. Now, if, now this is not for everybody, for more sensitive viewers, the Buck, Buck 90, thank you. Uh, uh, you remember that, holy crap. <laughs> I'm glad somebody's watching back then. Uh, this is a really cool edition. Uh, don't like the cover art on this one? Some people don't, I, I, I actually do. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, they do. Uh, that's some kind of neat stuff in here. Um, much like the VSA that recently came out, as you can uh, tell, this also has a, a poster. Double-sided. Banned in 34 countries. Keep telling yourself, it's only a movie. It's only a movie. It's only a movie. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> um, David Hess, uh, still, I love this film. Not my favorite, though. My favorite is uh, is Last House on the, uh, what's it called? Hmm. My favorite is by Ruggiero Diodato. Candy Snatchers. That's an older one. <sighs> Getting this stuff back in sometimes when you get out, guys. It's, it's killer. Could have been there's so many components. There we go. Last house is in stock for anybody who wants this, and I don't mind the uh, I don't I don't get the hate on the cover. I think it's kind of cool. Bless the child sense from Hitchhike is your favorite house. I like Hitchhike actually. That's probably the most subdued out of the three because uh, it's almost like a trilogy. There's last uh, last house on the house on the edge of the park, which is my favorite. Um, the last house on the left, which, which is a favorite of a lot of people's, and Hitchhike, which is, tends to be the favorite. Uh, well. Vinny, for one. Um, the Kurosawa box, I'm still, that's, that's my guess for the next gigantic box set from, from, uh, from Criterion. It was Kurosawa set. With, like, we got the, I got the Bergman one. I will definitely add the Kurosawa one right next to that in my collection. I'd have to. Uh, both me and my better half. And because this is not a box set, but I think this is still available. And everybody should own this. I like the panel. I haven't seen the panel in a long, long time. Um, 
Yeah, that, I remember the old, like, you had like a, uh, not a, a cardboard case, but a plastic case. At least the, the uh, video source that I saw it in did. And it had this kind of like, was, I think it's the Thorn EMI release. And it's got this like axe, like on the, on the cover of it. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the one uh, that, uh, that you're talking about. But uh, that, it's a fantastic like little film. It probably wouldn't work. I, I appreciate. I would appreciate it, but things it probably wouldn't work here. I'm in. I'm in Canada, and a lot of unfortunately, a lot of the digital codes are are region locked to the area. But thank you so much anyway, though. Are you ready? I always pimp this one out. I always show this one during a uh, during a sale because everybody should own it. Bring me the head of Alfredo Garcia. Is this the best Peck and Pop film ever made? No, it's not. It's a good film, but it's not the best film. It's got Warren Oates, though, and Warren Oates is fantastic. He's highly underrated. What is amazing about this limited edition, which makes what makes this one a absolutely stunning piece of work that has to be had, is the Paul Joyce Sam Peck and Pop man of iron documentary with over 10 hours of bonus interviews on here aside from the two-hour documentary this has 10 hours of bonus interviews uh and it is incredible this is amazingly done uh the, you know and it, it just runs the gamut you got jason robards on here lq jones james coburn rg armstrong ellie mcgraw chris christopher almost anybody that you could think that would be associated with Peck and Power is interviewed during this documentary. You must have this in your collection, 110%. This is a 100 plus on the, on the Aaron's like uh, recommendations. So, What's my favorite new Vincent? Uh, I don't know. I haven't watched a lot of them that I got yet. I keep going to watch some. And then my better half wasn't feeling well recently, so I had to, uh, so I, I did get more time to watch at that point. But uh, I, I was just, uh, it's been busy. It's been really busy. Uh, I sat down to watch, what was it last night? I had the new ones? I, had, I don't have the new, new ones. I haven't watched The Savage Harbor or Evil Town yet. I really want to watch those. I'm really looking forward to Savage Hybrid, actually. So this was put out first by, it was put out by Criterion. Okay. And then it was put out by Arrow Academy. The right way. Lust in the Dust? That is awesome. Your son rocks. Uh, Tab, Hunt. Tab Hunter had such a, had a bit of a heart. Tab Hunter should have been a much bigger actor than he was actually, Vinny. Uh, but at the time, there were a few actors around Tab Hunter that were that were in the closet, that were closeted, and uh, actors whose reputations could not come out, uh, so they could not be the person that that came out, nor could be the the person punished at at the time for being uh, uh, in the closet or being being gay. Uh, exactly, day. So Tab Hunter ended ended up being one of those fall guys that would have to uh kind of take the brunt of it and uh, it's a shame because he is a fantastic actor and it's neat to see him get to do like stuff like lust in the dust and of course he had that role in greece too which i personally love really i i i i know when it comes to academy award-winning acting frank salone and chris mitchum nicholas worth got a part though doesn't he like that a small part in that film too but here, see this? This is Christoph Kozlowski's Decalogue. If you like the Kozlowski films and you like Decalogue, grab this. Like, definitely grab this. Even if you've got the uh, Criterion edition of it, this is better. This is way better than the Criterion edition of the Decalogue. It has a, an amazing book on Kozlowski. This is a better one. Brian, I'm not gonna lie. This is a, this is a better edition. I researched this well before I picked up one. Uh, Carter one's good, but 
the extra, like the book and the extra like television like work that he did on here. Like I think the Criterion one has like the two kind of like spliced together like movies that were made out of the Decalogue that, that aren't included on this. So you can get like both and have kind of a, a uh, an ultimate edition, right? But this has a, like a lot of like other uh, other television movie work that he did as well. Uh, so you get like something like, like this is like just number one, friends. So you got Declag 1 and 2 on here. You'll also get stuff like, you know, his 29 minute film that he made called Pedestrian Subway or uh, an 82 minute feature length documentary that he made called Still Alive about the uh, uh, the life and work of of her, of her uh, of a film scholar. It's just really cool stuff. I know you're a Criterion junkie, but dude, if you're a Kozlowski fan, you're going to have to grab this one of these days. Go with the joke, dude. Oh, thanks for coming in, Ryan. I, I, uh, I'll probably be heading out pretty soon myself as well, because uh, as you guys know, I was sneezing a lot earlier, and I, I'm going to hazard on the side of caution uh, to, uh, to stay uh, clear of getting the cold. Swing time. Oh, good one. That is a really good one. And this one's out of print, but this is a give you an idea of the more recent uh, Criterion limited edition stuff that's Criterion. You got a Criterion in my head now, guys, uh, of the more recent Arrow video stuff that has come out. Oh, Warlock. Nice. So we got some unboxings coming up, right? We got like Vinny's unboxing, which is coming up tonight. Uh, going to be filmed at least tonight. Going to be up tomorrow or filmed filmed an up tonight, maybe. I'm going to keep an eye on there. Uh, cause I love unboxings. You know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a kill. I love unboxings. Uh, but this here is the release of the thing. And just look at the, just the beauty that this is the artwork and the set that cry that criteria, that arrow did for the thing. Chance smoke. Actually, I like that. Facets. I'm going to look into them, actually. Well, there we go. This is what I want to end on. If you ever wonder, like, the quality of the Criterion releases or what some of the, some of the artwork is Criterion. Oh, ah! <laughs> so the air releases or the artwork or anything like that. This is, this is amazing. Uh, this to me is one of the best pieces of art for any cover for any release in a long time it really encapsulates the film and it is just genius it is absolutely genius genius piece of art arrow puts out a lot of things like this i'll be looking forward to seeing what you guys get and as you guys as you know i'm always following yourself on instagram too as well Hit me up after the sale. Let me know. Like, send me a message. Or during sale if you want to. If you have... Are you sure, Trini? It's a buy one, get one. Might have some limited edition stuff. Trini is secretly cursing me right now. Uh, so, guys, there we go. At 88 minutes, it's like the sweet spot for a slasher film. We've done pretty good here tonight talking about Arrow Video. I want to thank and Criterion as well. I'm going to have to go back and read this. Uh, I don't watch a lot of my videos back unless uh, there's like when there's a lot of activity in the chat. Um, oh, thanks a lot. Happy Father's Day to all you too and all the dads out there and all the people that like take care of people. People because you don't have the doesn't have to be your own kid uh, if you're. Uh, dad or stepdad or moms raising kids on their own or dad's raising kids on their own or you're just somebody that's you know that's helping out that's taking care of take care of kid in neighborhood or anything like that happy father's day i miss my kitties tonight i really do but they're out and they're having a good time and i'm happy for them anyway there you go on that very sappy note happy father's day to all have a great, great evening. I will be talking to you again tomorrow when the Arrow video sale starts. And we will talk here about what we got, what we're thinking about getting, what's tempting us, and what we're on the fence about. 
I am Aaron. You are the movie club. You are awesome. Have a fantastic night. And I will remember, you're a bad man. For me right now, it's time for tea. As you can tell, my voice, my voice.